So we are in the final hours of the Xbox 360 Marketplace Store shutdown. You literally only have days until the 29th now before it all goes goodbye. And in this video I am going to be taking a look at some of the Kinect titles and the DLC I think you should definitely pick up before the store closes. So without much further ado, my name is Random Gamer Riven, the editor of Randomized Gaming, and as always I thank you for watching this video. I do hope you enjoy it. As always, if you like our content, consider supporting the channel, etc. Hitting the likes, you know the drill by now. I'm in a bit of a rush with this video, so I'm actually not using a script. I'm actually talking on the hoc, or ad hoc I should say. As that way I can get this video done really quickly. So apologies if there's a few more errors than normal, but I just want to get this one done and dusted and out for you to have one final look at the Xbox 360 store before it closes. And I'm going to be covering the two areas I haven't until now, which is Connect Games and some of the best DLC to pick up for games. Or for those who don't know, DLC stands for Download Content or Add-on Content as it's listed in the Microsoft Store. And at the end of the video I'll also be looking at the selection of games you can download entirely for free. That's true, there are a number of free games you can download and some have free DLC as well, the free to play on any Xbox 360 as long as you have Xbox Live. Thank you for all your comments in the previous video, it's great to see you enjoying our content and providing even us with a bit of information we didn't know about. So in my last video I briefly covered Kinect. After some shifting around I have been able to get the Kinect working in my capture room. Not perfectly, it can't see my legs properly but for most of the games I can still get them to run and function. One or two I had issues with, but I do want to go over the Connect because as I said in my previous video, Connect is done and dusted and it ain't coming back and Connect is the one thing that we're going to lose for good. And as I mentioned previously, Connect is not going to be emulatable easy either because you're going to need the device really hooked to your PC. So far the only one I'm aware of is Sonic Free Riders. They've actually managed to patch out the Connect controls for that one but I don't know if that's possible with every game. So I'm actually going to run down a list of some of the best games to pick up with on Connect that are going away. Some are retail, some are digital only, and some of the retail ones do have DLC as well. So just as before, in no particular order, let's get started with the Connect games. Fruit Ninja Connect. So I'll start with all the digital only games first off. And I think it's fair to say Fruit Ninja Connect is probably one of the most popular and best titles on the system. It's a very straightforward game, actually pretty easy control. All you do is chop up fruit with your hands and it's just good fun, good relaxing fun. You just literally chop up lots of fruit, hit the bananas for special abilities. You can freeze the fruit on screen for multi chops. The aim is to try and chop as many fruit with one swipe as possible for bonus scores. There's a couple of modes and there's quite a lot of cosmetic DLC as well with this one. So if you want retro styled 8-bit graphic looking fruit you can do with one of the DLCs and the rest all do very similar things. It's not a particularly in-depth game but I said it is a lot of fun. It's quite a nice and relaxing one to play. You don't need to think about anything. It's just literally swipe your hands and chop stuff. It was actually included three with a couple of games like the Gun Stringer and it was one of the most popular Connect games and you can see why because it's just really easy to pick up and play this one. Home Run Stars. Okay so we have two baseball games coming up. This first one is all about batting in the terms of baseball and Home Run Stars is just a really simple game where you just have to whack the balls back and try and hit them as far as possible and you get bonus score racking up points and if you get home runs you get extra balls and the aim is to get as high a score as possible. You basically get a home run by trying to get a good or perfect ball basically when the pitcher throws the ball and the pitcher's balls get more and more difficult as he'll throw them in all sorts of weird wonderful ziggy zaggy patterns but basically they'll flash a star just before at the right moment hit them when they're turning into the star and you'll get a perfect shot. It's actually just really good simple fun to play and a really nice simple easy game. Not an expensive one and makes pretty good use of the connect as well. Diabolical Pitch. So we go from batting in baseball to pitching. Diabolical Pitch is a rather wacky 
take on American baseball pitching. It was developed by Grasshopper Manufacturers. So the minute I say that name, if you know that Japanese studio and the games they did, great studio. This is perhaps not their greatest game, although it is quite colorful, quite wonderfully done. Basically, you're a pitcher, you get injured, your career looks to be over, you go for a drive in a car and then appear to basically be killed in a car crash and then you wake up in a dreamland fun fair where you literally have to pitch to escape. It is very over the top, you have to pitch at oncoming enemies. It does remind me a little bit of House of the Dead in that style of like these oncoming mechanical robots crossed a bit with I suppose Five Nights at Freddy's. Your aim is to pitch the balls, you've got super attacks, stop the oncoming enemies and basically get as much score as possible. There's even bosses at stage, you, got, you can target the ball as well where you're going to throw it and you have to learn some of the bosses, you have to hit them when they don't have their shield up and stuff. So yeah, quite a fun one. Certainly a bit crazy, takes a bit of practice to get used to and a bit more active than say home run stars which is required you to bat, this requires you to kick and throw as well but yeah, good fun. Haunt. Now this is quite a bit of a spooky one, it's kind of like the old Disneyland haunted house cross with Ghostbusters and it has that sort of Ghostbusters comic take on the haunted action. Unfortunately the footage I captured for this video wasn't great because unfortunately in my room setup although I was able to capture most games this one was one I wasn't that issue where it couldn't quite see my legs so trying to walk forward you're supposed to stand still and walk on the spot was not very easy when I tried it in the other room which was much larger and unfortunately I don't have the capture PC I got it working fine it's actually quite a good one I managed to beat the first boss and get the first um, vial back to the slightly wacky engineer basically you explore the uh, mansion, you'll notice you're being guided by a character in the paintings who um, I think there might be something a little suspect about and should be saved, but basically he's trapped in the paintings, you have to go around, point the light, you have to use the light to scare off the ghost. So some ghosts you have to avoid, some ghosts you have to uh, battle. There is like a Fright Night bit where when you're walking through, you'll occasionally get a sudden jump start where ghosts will come charging down the hall or a knight, may, knight suit of armour may come out and attack you and you've got to try and duck it and dodge it. All good fun and yeah, quite quite actually quite a good one you can find scraps of newspapers that tell you about the engineer who made the built the mansion and uh, what he got up to and so that's what made me lead to think that perhaps the character guiding you around the house and some of his dialogue implies it's a little bit twisted and it is an xbox 360 exclusive like all these connect games and it's going to be gone for good doodle jump for connect Okay, so this is a port of a 2009 mobile game, which was in effect an endless jumping game like many mobile titles you see, much like the old arcade games where the aim is just to get as high a score as possible and nothing else. This Connect version is a much more structured version of the game with lots of stages and you can get ranked on your performance so you can get one, two and three stars. So there's a lot more content to it. The trouble is I much prefer the sort of three windows version you can get just by going on a web browser because the controls are so much better. You need a lot of room, you need to sidestep left and right and you need to be pretty agile and quick. In the footage you're seeing here recorded I didn't actually was quick enough to actually maneuver left and right. Partly as my room where I was capturing it wasn't big enough. It's not quite as good as say the mobile version on my personal account but if you want a bit of fun it's not that expensive so consider it but yeah this is definitely one I don't think Connect was the best format for it and it could have just done with joypad controls. Free Fall Racers. Now this is quite a fun one with lots of flying animals as you die through and race through stages. It's actually quite a good arcade Connect game and actually quite a good uh, racing game as a whole it's actually one of the better Connect titles as you glide your little I think I was a flying squirrel here gliding in through the stages. It's quite easy to manoeuvre, controls well and just quite good fun as you glide through the stages, not too exerting and it's got some decent visuals. Can't really fault it anywhere, it's certainly one of the better titles. Lead Me's. Now this is one that's a bit like Lemmings crossed with games like Troddlers and it's actually really really good, probably one of the best titles on Connect, as you have to guide your little Lemmies to the exit while collecting stars and you've got to be very careful how you pose yourself in order for them to get the stars and get to the exit without you killing them because you can crush them and knock them and all sorts of things with the little lead me's as they walk around the stages. Very good fun although I wasn't able to capture it that well due to the me being blocked partly by 
some of the objects in the room but it's it's quite a good one and I highly recommend it even if this isn't the best footage but yeah definitely recommend this one. Mini Ninja Adventures now this is a spin-off of the Xbox 60 retail game Mini Ninjas which was a fairly decent action platformer this is purely a hack and slash arcade title where you move your ninja left and right and slash up the enemy so it's kind of like a wave game much akin to space invaders where the waves of ninjas keep coming at you and just got to move left and right and slash them to pieces quite very simple to play quite good fun nice and easy doesn't do t anything too advanced in connect so actually controls pretty well so another quite good one connect sports gems Okay, so there were a range of the Connect Sports titles released as Connect Sport Gems. They're just listed as their name, so like boxing, bowling, etc. in the digital store. So if you go through the arcade listings, you'll see them listed. They're just simply the single games taken out of Connect Sports, but they've been given additional challenges, which in many ways actually makes them slightly more fun and a bit easier to get into games. So I've actually picked up a couple of these and actually prefer some of these versions to the actual ones in Connect Sports. As you get like daily challenges where it'd be like catch uh, and the penalty saver one you get catch it with like a glove stop an incoming ball with your foot catch so many etc etc and it keeps going there's quite a few of these about 10 in total they're all really cheap they're about a pound 50 so if you want to get you can get these are an alternative version to connect sports and they have their own achievement roster as well but they are the same games just in cut down version with the extra challenges Mars Rover Landing. Now this one is a standalone game even though technically it falls under the Connect Fun Laboratory. I think this was like one of the last ones to be released and as Connect Fun Laboratory which I'll cover next is a bit tricky to get running these days this one is purely a standalone release. However on the downside it is one of the many titles now where the listing for it no longer appears up in any of the listings in the Xbox 360 store you have to search for this one to actually find it so if you search for it it'll come up this is a free downloadable game so download it even if you don't have connect and what you've got to do is try and land the Mars rover it's a great fun little game yes it is connect only but you know what it's free so just download it this one doesn't need the main connect fun labs hub so it works as a standalone game connect fun labs okay this is an interesting one Many people thought Connect Fun Labs was actually delisted a long time ago. It isn't and it is still working and you can still download almost all the free games for it. And if you have Connect, they're definitely worth downloading. They aren't very big games. They're all very little mini titles. Nothing major here, but it's worth looking at. A couple do need online only, I believe, when I was using a couple of them. But yeah, they're all interesting, fun little mini games you can play and almost all of them have achievements. There were a couple of paid for ones but it looks like some of the paid for ones have been delisted now and you can't download them because what happens is you can't actually access Connects Labs the way you used to. So in this footage now I'm just actually going to quickly guide you through actually grabbing Connect Fun Labs. First off you actually have to search for it in the Xbox 360 store. It will only show up in the search function and when it does turn up it will only show up as an add-on. The reason being Connect Fun Labs was designed to work with the NXZ dashboard I understand and originally actually had an application tile for it on the main dash. When Microsoft updated to Metro as I understand it, bear in mind I'm not totally sure on this because I never downloaded Connect Fun Labs till last week, they actually removed that application and it was just li literally left, left in the store in a sort of a wandering position and you cannot access it via any of the my games list you can only access it via the recents list but if you search for it in store you will find it and it will show up as an add-on so even though it shows up an add-on download this add-on and then go and also download all the corresponding games as i'm going to quickly show here i'm listing all of them and showing you the various searches as well
Now, in order to actually access this, we're actually going to need to go into our recent tab from the guide. That's the recent tab from the guide, not the one from the dashboard. Bring up the Xbox guide by pressing the guide button on the 360 controller. Then you're going to move to the games and app tab, and then you're going to move down to the most recent option and select that. Now press RB twice when this the recent tab shows, you'll get three options. You have like current games, download games, and all games. You need to go to the all games, so press RB twice. Now you need to scroll down in the all games to find Connect Fun Labs. It will be a long scroll if you've got a lot of games, so be prepared for that. Once you've found it, press A to launch it. And Connect Fun Labs will run. And as you can see from this footage, I was able to get into Connect Fun Labs and play the various games. The only note of caution I should note is because I think they've changed how you have to run it, if you download a patch, it can't restart Connect Fun Labs and will crash the Xbox. So if you download any of the three patches and you are going to still have to download them, it will basically black screen your Xbox and you will have to, because I think what it does, it's stuck in a loop trying to look for the restart, but I think it can't find the app to restart anymore. So you have to power off your console and then basically restart it again. But that time the patch will have downloaded, so it won't request an update. Yeah, they're only little games, but they're free. So if you've got Connect, it's worth consider picking up. And all the games show up as add-ons in the store. But again, you have to search for each and every one of them. All the add-ons have to be searched for. None of them show up in the A to Z listings. So on the retail front, there are a surprisingly large amount of games that were made specifically for Connect and quite a few that also feature the odd bit of Connect features like Mass Effect 3. Although the slogan better with Connect was a bit of a joke as I have no idea how you would play Mass Effect 3 with Connect. I can only assume it was just the boomstick thing where if you shouted boomstick into the mic it would swap to the shotgun. But the first game I'll talk about is Connect Adventures. So this one's a fun selection of mini games. Now, Connect Adventures is actually the pack-in title with everyone who bought a brand new Connect. If you're buying a second-hand Connect, then I recommend grabbing a copy of this just so you match it up with your Connect because you should have got one with it if you bought a new one. So it's quite a good game. I think this one comes with the uh, tracking card as well, which allows you to align collect. So make sure you get a Connect game with the tracking card if you are buying a second-hand unit or even just get a scan of the tracking card. I suspect that will probably work as well. It's nothing special, but it's nothing terrible. Although I will admit the actual tracking at the start of it, trying to recognize you is one of the, because it's one of the early games, actually some of the worst initial tracking where it struggles to recognize you as it moves up and down. I had to sort of manually override it with the Y to stop it tracking and then it saw me. But yeah, this is like I said, a fun selection of mini games. The rapid footage as you're seeing here is really good. One of the better games. It basically does what he says on the tin. It's sort of a welcome to connect. Steel Battalion Heavy Armor. Okay, so I discussed this one in my previous video. It is one of the best games on Connect, provided you can put up with the controls and you have an extremely large amount of space. You actually have to sit down in order to play this one. And I can't recall if you need the controller or not as well to partially do some actions. A lot of it was sort of hack. You may have done, but basically you have to move your hands around to move in the cockpit. I think you maybe had to manoeuvre some things with the controller. It was a, it's a really big, ambitious game. It didn't quite work in some areas, but probably as the most ambitious Connect game, and as one I've actually done all the DLC for and got all the achievements, and that's no easy task, I can tell you. It's definitely one of the ones with the best scope as you move your mech around and blast all the enemies apart. This is the only one I didn't capture footage for. for. I'm using stock footage from one of the main trailers because I just didn't have the space to capture any footage for. This This needs a big space is one of the negatives with this game. You have to have a big You need to be able to sit down, have clear line of sight to the camera from you. What's most memorable about this one is the fact it makes use of the title Battalion. So whereas the original Steel Battalion on Xbox was more you just piloting a mech blowing stuff up, 
which had an absolutely awesome controller that was far better than the controls in this one. This one actually has a feel of the mech being controlled, not, not just you, but you've got AI characters that work with you and they are all part of the story. As you go through the course of the game, your actions can decide if your fellow pilots and battalion members get killed and of course, of course the cost of the game, they change in and out of the campaign. And if you're good enough, you can actually keep every single one of them alive. But it's really tricky to actually do, but you actually get used to quite liking them. And I quite like the initial three, if you keep them alive at the very end, will be in the last mission with you. Right, and there's a reference to the fact, hey, this is how we started, let's end it. But you'll meet a whole crew of them along the way as the members swap in and out. Some will get injured and some can also get killed if you do things wrongly. It's, it's a really tough game to master, but when you do it, it's quite satisfying. And as I mentioned before, this one does have quite a bit of DLC, bonus campaign missions which do have achievements, and additional skins as well which do give you tactical advantages, so I think one speeds you up, one improves your damage. They're a bit naughty, but yeah, they do come in handy, so grab that DLC while you can as you've only got days left to pick it up. And I don't think this game will ever be coming back. It'd be nice if Capcom reworked it to take out the Kinect controls, but I don't think they will do. Bear in mind, this is a From Software game as well. And if you play this, you'll see their pedigrees in it. It did get mauled in reviews, and I think somewhat unfairly, but it's just a game you do have to be a bit patient with to learn the controls, and yet they don't always work. But as someone who's actually finished it, I did enjoy my time with it. Crossboard 7. Okay, for you viewers in North America, this was known as Adrenaline Misfits for you. It's by Konami and it probably is the best snowboarding game on Kinect and it might just be, again, one of the very best games on Kinect. This actually gets the controls and the length of the sort of missions just right, so it's a good mix of stuff. And it actually plays really well. It is a very energetic game. You will be jumping as you're moving down, snowboarding around, but it, it's a lot of fun. I've actually been playing this one most recently, and I've been quite surprised how good it is. It does very much remind me of the old style arcade games and the old sort of snowboarding games like 1080. But yeah, you do need to jump a bit and you will be turning and moving, but this one is not too difficult to control. So unlike Sonic Free Riders, which is terrible, this, you can actually maneuver left and maneuver right, and the controls feel just about right and you can jump and it recognizes everything pretty well. There is some DLC, annoyingly it's actually the Adrenaline Misfits which is the name of the sort of cool characters on the, the cover. For some reason their boards are DLC and their boards are some of the best in the game and I suspect the DLC is content that was unlockables in game that was cut out because there's an awful lot of unlockables in game. You have to unlock the Adrenaline Misfits and you have to unlock additional stages and various boards. So the Adrenaline Misfits boards are some of the best in the game if you want to use them early on and if you want the matching ones with the characters you will have to buy them. But overall this is a really well made title, one of the best on Kinect. So yeah, highly recommended and as I said this one does have DLC. Sonic 3 Riders. So seeing as I just mentioned it, I might as well discuss it. Sonic 3 Riders is a futuristic hoverboard style game very much similar to Crossboard 7. As I mentioned, Crossboard 7 is the vastly superior game to this. So Sonic appeared in a couple of racing games. There was a previous one on boards on the PlayStation 2. And I have a suspicion this was going to be a sequel and wasn't originally going to use Kinect. That might explain why there has been a fan patch to actually remove the Kinect controls. Because that's going to be very hard to do. And that might also explain why this game is almost impossible to control because they have not set the movement up. Unlike Crossboard 7, which seems to be able to correctly recognise his left and right tilts, Sonic Riders does not. Sonic 3 Riders, despite the stages being great and you've got all the Sonic characters, lots of unlockable and content, it is a nightmare to control. You have to absolutely yank yourself left and right to even remotely turn, which makes winning races incredibly hard. Added to that, the races are extremely long, which is just not fun. They are way too long, and this is why I feel it was probably designed as a joypad game originally, because these races don't seem like they were aimed to connect, because you've got to do a lot of jumping, turning, and trying to turn with this really bad controls is just really annoying, and the stages are just so, so long. It's one I think Sonic fans will enjoy, and it's one most people might put on just to see, hey, it's Sonic, you're riding a board, you're trying to control it, but you're not going to be winning in races. This one is very difficult to play unless you spend a lot of time with it. Like I said, this is one that you might literally want to emulate due to the fact that you can patch out the controls. 
It's a great looking game and there's lots of content, but it's one that definitely takes a while to master on Kinect. Carnival Games in Action. Okay, this is another one with a slightly different name. In North America, it was called Carnival Games Monkey See, Monkey Do. And ironically, it is called that also in the European version when the game is not patched because I actually loaded it up unpatched the other day and um, it got the Monkey See, Monkey Do name. So this is quite a fun mix of Carnival Games. I was always a bit wary of this one, but I thought I'd give it a try seeing as um, Connect is ending. And yeah, it's actually quite a good fun selection of Carnival Games. The roller coaster one, I was quite surprised how impressive that was with the fact you're moving around. Very Sonic 2 bonus stage in spider Well, But yeah, lots of like mini Carnival Games and they actually play really well. So they're only short bursts. You've got one with pump up the hot air balloon, I've got a bit of footage on, and there's bit ones where you front throw wings. I think there's like a, the old classic hammer weight stuff and lots of other ones. There's some dancing games as well. This one does have two DLC packs that add in more dancing games and more roller coaster rides. And both those packs do add in achievements, so just be aware of that. If you're an achievement hunter, you will need to get those packs now. But I'm quite surprised. This one's got a nice selection of games and it does feel like all the fun of the fair. Sesame Street Once Upon a Monster and Sesame Street Connect TV. So I'm going to talk about the two Sesame Street games together. They're both quite similar, but they are definitely great for young children and you just want some fun time with Connect. For me, they're a slight nostalgia trip down memory lane, as if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you'll be aware the US children's educational show Sesame Street used to be shown on British TV on Channel 4 at lunch times up to about I think it was 99 or 2000 at which point the shop's showing it so curse you channel 4 for not showing it. it used to be a wonderful thing for kids uh, it still is and unfortunately it's not shown on UK TV anymore but Sesame Street Once Upon a Monster so the first one is like an interactive uh, adventure book quite good fun it's this one has some live action but it's largely computer generated visuals as you play on the Xbox play mini games have to do poses in front of the monsters basically an adventure following Cookie Monster and Elmo this one once upon a monster does have free DLC in the store so do go download that at least I think it's three I can't quite remember actually but I think it was three so yeah do get that DLC it was a bonus chapter but yeah it, it is a great little one you basically have to be like friends to the monsters dance and move and do all sorts of things so yeah it's quite a good fun one highly recommend it the other one now there are two a couple of these connect tv games um the sesame street one so there's a disc version and there's a digital version the digital version is completely defunct now so there's no point in you trying to download it the app has even been removed and i think if you even have the digital app still it was live streaming the video so it's no longer accessible but this two disc retail release does still work and allows you to watch multiple episodes of Sesame Street or at least like special edition versions I think were done particularly for this Connect TV that basically you watch it and you get to point out issues and play mini games with like Elmo and Grover and the other characters from Sesame Street You've got Bert and Ernie on the back of the box so yeah both games are great for children and they're educational as well so I highly recommend them you know what if you just want some fun the characters at Sesame Street are wonderful because it's such a nice thing for kids and even as adults if you just want something that's uh, just nice and fun to play. Connect Nat Geo TV America the Wild So the other Connect TV game which is actually in the same sort of boat it got a retail release which covered the first season and this can be fully completed. There's also a digital app and the digital app version for this can still be downloaded in the store but I believe it's been totally delisted. This game in itself is a nice wildlife one. So again it's a double disc set this retail disc version and you can watch the episodes from the DVDs and play them. The good fun you basically have to see the animals, learn a bit about animals, some mini games, not the best mini games, but you dress up as animals, etc. And you get some wildlife footage from the Nat Geo. I'm not, again, I'm not going to show any of the wildlife footage due to the fact that I don't know if I'm suddenly get copyright strike from Nat Geo, but uh, or National Geographic, I should say. That's the channel's name full. But yeah, nice little wildlife thing. Again, something quite good for kids if you want some educational stuff. Connect Star Wars. 
Okay, like many Kinect games, you will notice a theme here. It is largely a selection of mini games. Kinect Star Wars was heavily lambasted on release, but there's actually some quite good fun games here. So I will admit the dancing game is utterly stupid and has weird Star Wars remixes of a couple of well-known songs. I, it's just not something you expect in Star Wars. And the lightsaber battles, I don't particularly like how they work in this as well. However, the Rancor game shown here is good fun as you just tear apart everything in sight. And you also get the pod racing game, which is again another really good one. In fact, the track here is based on the uh, scene in the original Phantom Menace film. And this is actually, both these two games are really good fun. So smashing stuff is always good fun as the Rancor and just like racing around the pods. The controls are actually pretty good for the pod racing one. It looks good. And plays good and it actually feels a bit like you're actually pod racing so this is one where i recommend some of the games and not others but yeah the pod racing stuff is really good now one thing i should mention and i'm going to flash it up here this is an m tag a couple of games have scannable tags to unlock stuff star wars connect is one of them and this unlocks anakin's pods in the pod racing game i believe there was only this tag in Star Wars Connect, but there may be more, I don't know. Connectables is actually really bad for this. There are lots of tags in Connectable, and many of them are very hard to find as well. Now, Disneyland's Adventure, I also believe, had M tags as well. So at least three games use these tags. So if anyone's got an archive of them, please do let me know. But yeah, the one I flashed up should work. So if you pause your phone on this video at that point and flash it up at the Connect, it should work. Let me know if anyone has any issues, but I've confirmed this one does work. Connect Sports. Now a long time ago I remember when Rare Software made some truly brilliant games on the N64, the ZX Spectrum, the Super Nintendo. These days under Microsoft's leadership they have seemed to have been left to make a lot of very generic, very average games. Connect Sports is another sort of fun generic average thing. There are actually two of them. There's Connect Sports 1 and Connect Sports 2. Both got retail discs. There's also an ultimate pack and the ultimate pack also includes all the DLC but they are on a digital redemption code so that code will be no longer available come the 29th when the store shuts down. There is quite a lot of DLC for both so I do recommend if you plan on playing these games or getting either seasons or both seasons grab the DLC now there's also the digital release as well but yeah you have only got days and a lot of these games will be inaccessible once the DLC gets removed so do bear that in mind they're quite DLC intensive games but yeah lots of fun sporting games if you want to try various things like bowling skiing you know the the drill here there's lots of mini games basketball etc all done in mini forms Although you can tell from my enthusiasm, I haven't actually played this match, so I hope those listed games are in there. I know there's definitely a boxing one, and I, well, I did play the bowling one as the footage shows, but yeah, it's definitely a very mixed bag. The Gunstringer. Twisted Pixels made a lot of really interesting Xbox 360 games, and the Gunstringer is no exception. This is actually a really good sort of arcade style shooter with comic cartoon looking characters. Admittedly, the controls don't work as well as they should because you've got to flick your hand up to shoot and often it doesn't recognise that, which is a bit of a shame. But the game itself is actually very good. This would have really done well with conventional controls because it would have been a really good game. As it stands, it can be a little bit temperamental. There's one three DLC available in the store and two paid for. And the two paid for ones give you achievements as well. But it is a very interesting game. Very challenging as well if you want to get all the achievements, but yeah, good fun sort of Western style game. So I do recommend it if you've got Connect. It's one of the better games on Connect. As with many of Twisted Pixel's other games, it's an interesting mix of 3D graphics and a few live action sections. One of the DLCs is almost a completely live action movie, very similar to the old arcade games Mad Dog McCree 1 and 2, except they look a bit more budget than Mad Dog McCree 1 and 2 as you can spot a number of modern trappings in the scene, such as electric light bulbs and spinning fans in the church. It's not perfect, but Gunstringer definitely gets my vote as one of the better games on Connect. Fable The Journey. So I'm gonna be brutally honest, as a huge RPG fan, I never particularly liked the Fables. They always felt like my first RPG developed by an inexperienced team that didn't quite understand the genre and they never quite got the blend right. The third game on Xbox 360 was also a technical nightmare 
running with a horrendous frame rate of points. Whether some of that was down to Microsoft's leadership, I don't know. This one, to be honest, is actually not too bad, but as you can see here, it does take a while to get into game. I've not really played it too much. There is a lot of DLC, but it was largely pre-order bonus items, but all the footage you can see here is actually from the very start of the game, because I've never actually played that far into it. I've never actually finished any of the Fable games. I've always played quite a way into them and just sort of given up. But uh, this one I haven't actually just played that much, but it's actually not too bad. But as you can see from the start, it is literally me riding my horse. And that's literally what you've got to do. You've got to get your horse to pull your carriage and just follow the instructions. This is like the first 20 odd minutes of footage I've literally recorded. So I didn't get into any of the action or anything, but the horse controls are actually very good on Connect. I will admit I was quite surprised. It was quite nice to give my horse a pleasurely ride as we've got to get follow up with the rest of the caravan. But yeah, it's quite good fun. Certainly not the worst game on Connect, so it may get better, I don't know, and I don't know how the rest of the game handles either. Rise of Nightmares I do wonder if there is a hint to the nature of the game in the title. So this is one I keep meaning to get back into. I started it a little while ago and did really enjoy it. I haven't finished it yet, but it is a very good game. Although, again, you're fighting a little with the controls and clearly Sega knew there were issues with the controls because they implemented an auto-walk feature. But it's very much like House of the Dead meets a bit of Resident Evil, meets a bit of Saw, I suppose, the film series. It's got that classic sort of Sega-style action and does have that House of the Dead-style feel, but it's a bit more gruesomer in places. So not one for the squeamish, but it's quite a good adventure. So if I say the starting section here is the two characters trying to escape so I say they're not the main playable character in this and let's just say by the end of this scene the only thing they would be good for is sticking in jam jars. The plot of the game has you playing Josh who's on holiday with his wife Kate they're on a Romanian train traveling through the wilderness and then all of a sudden there is a train crash and then everyone on the train finds themselves in a sinister mansion run by an evil guy called None other than Victor. Suffice to say, Victor does some pretty unpleasant things to the train survivors and your job is to kill off all the monsters and escape with your wife. If you want something with a bit of blood, gore and horror on Connect and a bit of hack and slash action, this is definitely a game for you. Probably not for the squeamish, however. Connect Joyride. Connect Joyride, I think, probably wins the crown for being the best racing game on Connect. Uh, it's nice and simple to control, all you've got to do is hold your hand out in front of you, move it left, move it right to turn, and then you can pull back and forward to do tricks, sprints and boosts, and it's it's really easy to play and works very well. Again, this works well because it's not overly co making complicated use of Connect. it's very simple movement, it's quite a good fun little racing game. So there's lots to do in it, lots to unlock, and yeah. There is some free DLC, so you can get two, three cars from the download shop, so do download them now. I said any 3 DLC grab it while you can because remember in a few days time you ain't gonna be able to get it ever again unless you go along the pirate route as I mentioned before. For me this is one of the better connect games. I must admit I picked up a retail copy the other day for £1.50 in shops so uh, if you don't want to pay the digital price have a look in the stores and just grab a cheap copy. Lots of copies around I think it's one of them the better selling connect games. It's definitely one of the better ones on the system. If you fancy a race this is a good one to go for. Power Up Heroes. Clearly UBI Software cashing in on the Marvel craze at the time of all the superhero movies with this one. Powered Up Heroes is uh, basically a, just a brawling game between two characters. It's okay. You do lots of super moves, fight, punch, and it was put on discount the other day for like £5, which is what I picked it up digitally. There is a retail version. The retail version is also about a fiver to buy. Interestingly, as I mentioned Marvel, this game appears to have been used as the blueprint for a later game on Kinect and Wii U known as Marvel Avengers Battle for Earth, which was also done by UBI Soft. Both are sort of straightforward hero fighting games, but it's just between like one and two heroes, so it's more like a verse game like Street Fighter, not like a scrolling beat em up, so it's okay. If you just want to throw punches and kicks, quite a good thing to play, but nothing original here. Connectimals. Microsoft were clearly banking, along with Frontier, of this becoming a big game by the amount of money they pumped into this one. It definitely looks a high quality, polished product, and you had all the cuddly toys and plushies they sold as well that 
can be used to scan in for the game. There's also an awful lot of DLC with the Connectables now with Bears expansion, which did get a retail release, although the retail release is one broken achievement. You have to revert to the normal release if you want to get it. But yeah, there is the from Bears expansion. And there's also a number of animals you can download in the store as well. So there's about 10 downloadable pets. There's also a number of M tag scannable pets. Now I've got a list of some of them and I will stick them up in the blog in a few days but if anyone's got a full list of them I know the snow leopard one seems to be really rare so if anyone's got that do let me know some scan tags seem to have been one time only but most of them are general use they were in all sorts of magazines and things no one seems to have a proper archive of them and I don't know if they download anything from the net or whether they all just work from in-game so that'll be interesting to find out I want to try and get as many of those tags in one place so we can put them together so people can then access them all but even if you don't own any of the extra DLC, there's still quite a nice cuddly pet animal game. I'm not a huge fan of this one in some regards, although there's lots of mini games and stuff to do. It's quite fun. I dislike the fact they've just taken all these wild animals and just taken the cub version so they're all nice and cuddly. And don't look at them when they grow up to be more wilder animals and you have to respect in the wild. And as someone whose family has been involved in wildlife film production, I would like to have seen that because you can really show the, the growth and change of the animals. But yeah, it's mainly just you playing the cute little cub and lots of mini games. So the mini game here, I'm throwing a ball at some totem poles to knock over. It's probably one of the better connect games. But yeah, it's basically a game about owning a pet animal, really. Fantastic pets. Okay, so this one is almost the same as Connectimals. This was sort of like a budget or alternative version to Connectables done by another studio. Uh, basically, it is one with fantasy creatures. So if you want things like unicorns and dragons, this is your game to go for. Uh, largely, I saw a couple of mentioned this wasn't as good as Connectimals, so it's kind of like a poor man's Connectables, but you've got some cool fantasy creatures if you prefer that. This one does have DLC, so definitely if you want to grab it, do think about picking up the DLC and it was actually discounted digitally so although it got retail release the digital version recently got discounted and it's very cheap to buy. As with all the other DLCs mentioned I should just point out Microsoft did not put any on sale for this final shutdown so you will have to pay full price for all DLCs. Harry Potter Connect now the only reason this is getting a quick mention is because it got put on sale. Initially it was actually delisted but it has gone back up and it is available I think in the UK here at £3.75. It's quite a nice looking title. It is based on the sort of Harry Potter film so you've got all the characters that look like the actors although it didn't appear to feature any of the original voice cast of the actors. It was more just their digital appearances. But yeah if you're a Harry Potter fan there's a quick game here with mixing cauldrons and as you can see from this footage we have one sequence with a rendition of the late John Hur and another one with the late Alan Rickman, both great English actors. This one was developed by the now sadly defunct Eurocon, but I did actually work with them back on the Pirates of the Caribbean game in 2007, which was a long time ago now. Right, that's everything I'm going to say on Connect, but I will just point out that Connect is definitely going to have some of the more rarer titles due to its lack of popularity so it's worth grabbing the games now. I know it's something like Motion Explosion which did get a retail release is quite rare but there is a digital release of it and there are quite a lot of obscure games like I didn't know about the Hulk Hogan one, the wrestling one, there's quite a lot of Just Dance games etc. Another retail title to look out for is Power Rangers Super Samurai. This is quite a fun hack and slash one. It was available digitally but has since been delisted but you can still get retail copies of it. Not too bad, not, not brilliant but decent enough. I quickly got some footage I recorded of this one. There's also three Disney games and I'm quickly popping up some footage of Fantasia on it which actually was mainly a music game although it largely used licensed songs. So the song actually playing in this clip although I've edited it out was uh, Police's Message in a Bottle. The Fantasia one did have DLC but that's long been delisted but you've also got Connect Disneyland and Connect Disney Rush but all three of these titles did get Xbox One releases. I think the Connect stuff is definitely going to become a lot more collectible because it's going to be quite a lot rarer. A lot of the later Connect games didn't sell and I suspect they're going to be some of the more rarer to get 360 games in the future but that's of course if you actually want to play Connect. It's definitely a very active 
device to use and the controls aren't great and you can see why it petered out because the controls just aren't as good as they need to be but yeah it's definitely going to be one for the collectors in years to come so if you're looking for the connect games i'd recommend grabbing them now not 10 years down the line although i suspect in 10 years time i'm going to find connect a real struggle to play now i was also going to include a dlc roundup in this video but I've actually decided to cut that section for now and put that into a separate video which is probably going to be late running tight on time unfortunately. What I do want to point out is everything that will be in that video will actually be covered already on our blog as I put up a huge DLC list of every single game in the UK that is listed in the Xbox 360 marketplace store that still has DLC available to buy. So I recommend going through it sorting through the games you have and which ones you do and don't have the DLC for. Do also check the Xbox One games as a number of them that are available for sale on Xbox One don't always allow you to buy all the DLC you can buy on Xbox 360. Games that currently fall under this category include the Wizard's Tower DLCs from The Elder Scrolls Oblivion, a number of the DLCs from Civilization Revolution, the first map pack from Lost Planet 2, the smooth operator pack for Killer is Dead, both the DLCs for Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon, and all three DLCs for N+. None of these are available to buy on Xbox One. The Wizards Tower DLC, as I mentioned before, does show up in the store, but errors when you try to buy it. All the others are listed as not available for sale. Many DLCs also have to be searched for as they no longer appear in the A to Z listings either so you have to use the Bing search function and then type in the name of the game or the relevant DLC. But a couple of the more interesting finds are I didn't realise King of Fighters 12 had music packs, Spider-Man 3 DLC the new Goblin pack is still available to buy, there's a European only game known as Battle vs Chess on Xbox 360 that has two DLC packs. And the game itself is still available to buy new from Topware Interactive, the publisher, and their German website. Finally, do remember to download any free DLC already, it's free. So if you own a game that you've got free DLC and you haven't downloaded it, what are you waiting for? Download it now and do remember to grab those compatibility packs. If there are any games you plan on buying in the future, just go and grab them all. All compatibility packs are free. Sometimes they're called catalogue packs, sometimes they're called updates. As we mentioned before in Sleeping Dogs 3, there were, it was the Community Pack in Mass Effect 3. It was the Extended Endings Pack. Amata Gangsters has a free one as well that's actually a patch. Online connectivities are also going to get a, a worse to playing experience. So grab those ones now while you can. Finally, I want to end on a little bit of an upbeat note by saying there are a couple of Xbox 360 full games that are free and available to download in the store right now. So even if you've only just got an Xbox 360 account, you can download these games entirely for free. And I'm going to run down the full list just now. So free and available to the store are Doritos Crash Course, which is a digital game, the retail game Crackdown 1 and all its DLC, the retail game Crackdown 2 and all its DLC, Harm's Wave, which is an Xbox Live Arcade game, Connect Fun Labs, which I discussed earlier, Mars Rover Landing, which I also discussed earlier. Again, that's another Connect game, but it's free to download. Two Human, which was a, another Microsoft developed game that got into a bit of a legal issue with Unreal, but that's an interesting story. But yeah, that's available free to download. And Totem Ball is also free to download, although that requires the Xbox camera. There are three other three games that were delisted, and they are Aegis Wing, Doritos Dash, and Yaris. And the reason I'm mentioning them is, although they are free and de now delisted, if you can get a copy of those games' image and, and then burn it to disc, because they were free games, they, they haven't got a signed code so that just the basic image will run on the, of a disc and you can play them for free. That's how we actually got Yaris because it was never released in Europe. We managed to download it, burn it to a disc and then we were able to play it on our 360 because it's basically unassigned code. Those three ones are basically unassigned so if you can get hold of their images you can burn them to disc and play them. But yeah those are all the three ones and I highly recommend grabbing them all before they go as they're all totally free to play and actually pretty much all of them are very good little games and Crackdown is excellent.
Right, that's it from me, Random Gamer Riven. As you can imagine, this has been an awful lot of quick hard work for me to get this all done in time. Hopefully I'll be able to get a bit part done on the DLC. As I mentioned, do check out the list on the blog. That's got everything that I've found so far. If I'm missing any US or Japanese games, please do let me know. And if any DLCs that are not listed in the like Xbox One store, do let me know as well. I can't check absolutely everything, but the list I've got is pretty concrete for everything still up and available. And again, you may have to manually search for stuff now to find it in the store. You can also support this channel as always by hitting the like button, subscribing. I thank you all for watching. You can also follow us on Tumblr. You can also follow us on Twitch and Twitter. And you can also buy us a tea or coffee and support us on Ko-fi if you want. Do remember all the links are in the description and the pinned comment. I will include the links to the big DLC description list in the video description. Do check it out. So do read the video description. I'll also include it in the pinned comment as well this time around. Till next time, have a good evening, good afternoon, good morning or a good night wherever you are in the world today.